Another argument which may perhaps come near to thine own soul is this. Many have been saved who were as vile as thou art, and therefore there is salvation. No, sayest thou, none are so vile as I am. It is a mercy that thou thinkest so, but nevertheless it is quite certain that others have been saved who have been as filthy as thyself. Have you been a persecutor? Yes, you say. Eh, but you have not been more bloodthirsty than Saul. And yet that chief of sinners became the chief of saints. Have you been a swear? Have you cursed the Almighty to his face? Eh, and such were some of us who now lift up our voices in prayer and approach his throne with acceptance. Have you been a drunkard? Eh, and so have many of God's people been for many a day and many a year. But they have forsaken their filthiness, and they have turned unto the Lord with full purpose of heart. However great thy sin, I tell thee, man, there have been some saved as deep in sin as thou art. And if even none have been saved who are such great sinners as thou art, so much the more reason why God should save thee, that he may go beyond all that he has ever done. The Lord always delights to be doing wonders, and if thou standest the chief of sinners, a little ahead of all the rest, I believe he will delight to save thee, that the wonders of his love and of his grace may be the more manifestly known. Do you still say that you are the chief of sinners? I tell you, I do not think it. The chief of sinners was saved years ago. That was the Apostle Paul. But even if you should exceed him still, that word uttermost goes a little beyond you. He is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Recollect, sinner, if thou dost not find salvation in Christ, it will be because thou dost not look for it, for it is certainly there. If thou shalt perish without being saved through the blood of Christ, it will not be through want of power in that blood to save thee, but entirely through a want of will on thy part. Even that thou wilt not believe on him, but dost wantonly and willfully reject his blood to thine own destruction. Take heed to thyself, for as surely as there is salvation in none other, so surely there is salvation in him. I could turn to you myself and tell you that surely there must be salvation in Christ for you, since I have found salvation in Christ for myself. Often have I said, I will never doubt the salvation of anyone so long as I can but know that Christ has accepted me. Oh, how dark was my despair when I first sought his mercy seat. I thought then that if he had mercy on all the world, yet he would never have mercy on me. The sins of my childhood and my youth haunted me. I sought to get rid of them one by one, but I was caught as in an iron net of evil habits, and I could not overthrow them. And even when I could renounce my sin, yet the guilt still did cling to my garments. I could not wash myself clean. I prayed for three long years. I bent my knees in vain and sought but found no mercy. But at last, blessed be his name, when I had given up all hope and thought that his swift anger would destroy me and that the pit would open its mouth and swallow me up, then in the hour of my extremity did he manifest himself to me and teach me to cast myself simply and wholly upon him. So shall it be with thee. Only trust him. For there is salvation in him, rest assured of that. To quicken thy diligence, however, I will conclude by noting that if you do not find salvation in Christ, remember you will never find it elsewhere. What a dreadful thing it will be for you if you should lose the salvation provided by Christ. For how shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? Today, very probably, I am not speaking to very many of the grossest of sinners, yet I know I am speaking to some even of that class. 
But whether we are gross sinners or not, how fearful a thing it will be for us to die without having found an interest in the Savior. O sinner, this should quicken thee in going to the mercy seat. This thought that if thou findest no mercy at the feet of Jesus, thou canst never find it anywhere else. If the gates of heaven shall never open to thee, remember there is no other gate that ever can be opened for thy salvation. If Christ refuse thee, thou art refused. And if his blood be not sprinkled on thee, thou art lost indeed. Oh, if he keeps thee waiting a little while, still continue in prayer. It is worth waiting for, especially when thou hast this thought to keep thee waiting, namely, that there is none other, no other way, no other hope, no other ground of trust, no other refuge. There I see the gate of heaven, and if I must enter it, I must creep on my hands and knees, for it is a low gate. And there I see it, it is a straight and narrow one. I must leave my sins behind me and my proud righteousness, and I must creep in through that wicked. Come, sinner, what sayest thou? Wilt thou go beyond this straight and narrow gate, or wilt thou despise eternal life and risk eternal bliss? Or wilt thou go through it humbly, hoping that he who gave himself for thee will accept thee in himself and save thee now and save thee everlastingly? May these few words have power to draw some to Christ, and I am content. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved.